She comes. Are you going to church? No. Why, you look so sexy this yeah, morning. No, what are you cursing what? on there for? Well, I, re I wasn't really cursing and I, I had to delete it because. Yeah, is my dick bigger than your dick? That's funny as hell. Well, that's what I was talking about. Come here. Oh, shit. Come on, wait, can you measure my, you know? Hi. Maybe it is bigger than yours. <laughs> anyway, this is getting posted. So anyway, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Teresa was talking about what I was talking about, which is um, uh, a pissing contest. We can use that word. I can't use the, my proverbial, you know, is bigger than your proverbial, you know. So anyway, what I'm talking about, or what I was talking about, which I had to tame down. Yes, I've had to bite my tongue because I just want to get my message across and still have it child-friendly. You know, children over the age of 12, you know, every every child over the age of 12 has heard this analogy, I'm sure, unless you live under a rock or in a prairie somewhere where mom reads you the Bible three times a day and uh, you're homeschooled by, you know, some somebody who lives in the 1900s but uh early 1900s late 1800s all right uh, european women like russian men because they are more manly i literally asked a french woman that question she said american men are just too much a baby <laughs> have you been to paris i went i didn't i've never been to paris but i've seen parisians what a bunch of arrogant little girly mon but anyways, this is maybe not all of them. I'm sorry. Um, right. Okay, so what I was talking about was the temperature fluctuations in the other video that I had to so kindly delete. Uh, when you're outside and it's below, just say it's at zero. Zero degrees is when salt stops to work for melting ice and snow. Okay, that is the, that's cold. It, that's really cold. So, when you hit 10 degrees, pretty much, if you go out there with these bare fingers and you, you know, you're working with cold steel and stuff, you get frostbite pretty quickly. Uh, if you go outside in a t-shirt, you can walk to your truck and back to your house and you come in and your skin is pretty freaking cold. So, wow, boy, my scar really shows up nice. That scar is from my sister. Wendy, the one that passed away from cancer, she did that to me. She was really nice. Threw a stick at my sister, Holly, and whammo, right in the face I got it. She's reading poor Superman comics, or Spider-Man comic, and whooshing, seven stitches. Thank you, Wendy. It's just a reminder that I have. Uh, anyways, yeah, so I get all these comments about how zero is nothing, zero is nothing, zero is nothing. Zero is not nothing. Um, when I get up and I dressed to go outside in zero degree weather i layer my socks i layer my pants or i have uh, regular lined pants with bib overhauls i put a sweatshirt t-shirt flannel shirt sweatshirt bibs and then a zip up pull pull over a zip up hoodie so i can take a piss when i have to you know just unzip pull it down the bibs stay up here you flap it down you take a piss and then a pullover coat with a wool hat or uh, not a wool hat but a uh a beanie hat so that's about what everybody wears anybody wears that works outside in zero or below now i've been outside in much colder weather than zero uh it was it was four below here the other morning and it didn't feel any different than if it was five above it just didn't it doesn't start to feel uh warmer until you hit that 20 degrees uh 20 degrees Things still melt from the sun at 20 degrees. At zero, the sun doesn't melt the snow. There is no no sign of water anywhere. It's just ice. Um, but at 20, it, you'll see water on top from the snow. Uh, the snow will actually evaporate away from the sun at 20 degrees, but not at zero. Uh, so, yeah. Ain't hit zero here today in northern Pennsylvania. Still at minus two. Ain't less... Ain't as cold as 2014, though. It was 40 below here. Right. 40 below is extremely dangerous. I agree. But zero to, say, 20, that's you're dressed about the same. Maybe the duration of time that you're outside 
isn't as long. And if the wind is blowing, if the wind is blowing at zero or 20 below, you're just as freaking cold. It will cut right through you. It doesn't make much of a difference. And I'm sure there's people out there that are, are screaming at me. You don't know what you're talking about. You've never been in it. Yes, I have snowmobiled in minus 20. I've snowmobiled in minus 25. I think the coldest it was we were snowmobiling was minus 27. And the wind chill from the 50, 60 mile an hour snowmobile ride it would freeze you. It pretty fucking cold. It was cold. Uh, pullover suits, you know, with everything covered up. I didn't have a beard, but I had one of those, you know, things. All you could see were my eyes, and I had the helmet on to keep me from freezing. Mittens instead of gloves. That was always a good way to 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 go. So, yeah, uh, cold is cold. Cold is dangerous. Cold will get you. Uh, the reason that you're getting this video today instead of one of me out there in the tundra, the frozen tundra, the because it only ever got to 11 degrees yesterday, uh, that I saw, I didn't actually, I was actually mowing hay at, at 11 degrees, and uh, yeah, I was mowing hay all day yesterday, I didn't get home until 9 o'clock last night with the mower, um, and I'm probably going to go mow hay again now, you know, like, I got to go change a few blades, grease the bitch up, and go again, because that's what I have to do. I got to go check to make sure there's not too much snow on my hay to go mow it. Isn't that an amazing concept? So anyways, I had lost my camera yesterday. I could not find the damn thing until last night when I got back to the, the farm. And uh, I went looking for it. I spent about 30 seconds looking for it. When I picked up my coat, I found it. It was in the pocket of the coat that I had pulled over. Normally, I stick it in the uh, <clears throat> in my sweatshirt coat pocket but this time I stuck it in the heavy coat pocket and I had lost it so you got no video uh, and it was kind of boring anyway I mean just me mowing in snow and ice I actually scooped up a chunk I mean I went across ice that was this thick I kid you not and right at the edges it was a little bit like those air pockets where the air comes out you know because ice floats and then it drops back down when it freezes up all the water that's why when a pond gets completely frozen, it does this, because it floats until it freezes all the water, then it collapses down, and the edges is where it gets soft, kind of, you know, air pockets and stuff, the ice is thin. So the header, I've got set pretty heavy, because I want it to get as clo close to the ground as possible, and it, it dug in underneath it and chewed these blocks of ice I mean, just looked like snow flying everywhere i guarantee you nobody's ever seen that before that makes hay um but yeah it was it was pretty brutal so it was a slow go six mile an hour trying to get all the hay off the ground so that i could bail it um i don't think i'm going to bail it today i got to look at my weather uh, i'm thinking tomorrow is going to be a little bit warmer which is fine the ground is froze freaking solid but I want to mow again today. I may send somebody else to mow that ground down there, but I have to go for a drive really this morning and see what it looks like down that direction before I send anybody else to go do the job that I would normally do. Um, but hey, what, what, what can I do? I mean, if I go over and bail at that other place today, it's 30 miles away. Uh, that's why I was out so late because it takes an hour and some time to get there, hour and a half to get there, an hour and a half to get back, three hours of driving on the friggin' roads with knuckleheaded people, and and they're all looking at me like, man, this farmer's lost his marbles. He is crazy because I'm out there mowing. Uh, this particular farm, it got away from me last year. I had bales that laid out there. They got forgotten, and in the springtime when I went back to get them, uh, it's like a big light went on. Holy shit, there's still hay over there. Carl had let me know that there was hay over there. He was going to go pick them up, and we just didn't have time to do it. And they rot. They rotted. What can I say? So they're out there in the field, and they gotta have. They got to be dealt with. There's strings that need to get pulled off and things like that. I may employ my nephew today. I'm not sure. Both of them, actually. Uh, yeah, so there's just a lot of things going on, and I lost my camera yesterday, so that's why you're not getting the views and stuff. So you get to hear me yammer on. This is probably not going to be a very high-dollar video or a highly viewed video, um, you know, because people just don't want to hear me yammer on. That's why I go to the Ag Talk and the Raw one. Um, but what really kind of annoys me with these people, some of these people, Exit 36 off of Route 78. That snow squall came through. Yeah, well, uh, Kreuzeman, Kreuzeman, 
I was out there. I was at Lana LaBelle yesterday. That's where I'm going to be today. So if you're watching this one, uh, you're not far from me at exit 36. I think that exit 27, uh, the next exit, Lam Lamington Road exit. And so that's where that's where I'm at. I don't know who you are, but you know maybe if you wanted to stop by, you could. Um, yeah. You make hay in January. Our grass has been dormant since late August or September, like minus 38 yesterday morning, 12 mile an hour wind, just 40 mile. Yes, when you don't get your hay made in the summertime because of uh, 70 plus inches of rain. We've had well over 70 inches of rain for 2018 uh, when we normally have like 40 Five, 44 inches, I think, is our average. So our average went, we almost doubled our rainfall. So when you double your rainfall, guess what you only get? Half of sunny days. Half the sunny days, half the hay gets made. There you go. Because I'm at that point, you know. I can mow with two machines constantly, and now and with one baler. You know, I just need another two people. I, I've really missed Cody this year. He he's was working, and I think I'm just going to have to bite the bullet and and hire him. <laughs> I don't know. He's a really good operator. I got Joe, but Joe's not, he's young and he's not thinking like Cody does. And you know, it's like he needs to be told what to do and which is fine. He does a good job, but yeah, he does. God, God, nobody was in the path of that hay wagon. Yeah, that's true. That hay wagon would have killed you. It would have smashed a tractor and broke the axles off of it if it hit it, too. I mean, I've seen my dad pull in front of him and get him to stop, but I pulled in front of one that very same day. See, what's happening is because we have the the quick hitches or those uh, fast hitches for Bergman speed hitches, the tongue sits on like a ramp, okay? So the tongue drops down, and if you we park on the side of a hill, you know, we have to because that's just where the hay pile is. So you kind of angle the damn thing so that it, it parks. Well, when you're working with that load, you're moving it back and forth. And what happens is, because of the ice that is down there, that tongue just goes whoosh, downhill. It's like, hello, goodbye, and it's gone. And that's that's really what happened. It happened like three times that day that it wanted to get away from us. Uh, the time that it really would have got away on, on me, uh, I flattened the tire. I'd rather change a tire than deal with a tongue that's been folded under and destroying the front end of the uh, wagon because that's exactly what would have happened. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's that's what happened. So, Tim Tim was like, Dad, I've got a problem, <laughs> you know. And you know when Timothy's calling you, there's either a major problem or he needs, you know, he did something really good. Uh, but for the most part, you can't even call him. He's a pain in the ass. It was minus 25 here in Minnesota this morning. It's not cold if you dress for it. Thank you, Bill Long. Thank you so much because I don't think that the problems are any worse at zero than they are at, say, 20 below. Uh, I've been in that kind of weather, and things just don't start. Gel, fuel gels at 10, uh, you know, especially with this new soybean diesel that they've got, which I don't mind it. Summertime is awesome, but in the wintertime, that shit turns jellish. Uh, the farm fuel, though, which is the same fuel that we get on the roads, winterized, that didn't gel. And it doesn't make any sense to me. It didn't gel at all, as a matter of fact. I didn't even, and I mean, I put, Carl had over-treated the fuel that was in that Peterbilt. It, it was. Timothy went with the Ford, which he hasn't run in a month, and... He had a little bit of trouble. He dumped a thing of 9-11 in there, and boom, off it went. So, yeah. Uh -uh. Oh, and I would really, I would like to comment about people who have frozen to death in their cars lately. It was just as cold back in the 1920s and 30s, etc. The difference, they wore wool coats. And clothing that prepared and prepared because they were conditioned to winters like this. It was commonplace. Whoa. Have you ever driven down the road? At least here in New Jersey, you drive down the road and you see kids waiting at the school bus and their mothers are there in the car, you know, because, and I'm not talking about zero degree weather or minus four degree or six degrees, and we did hit six below. But 
on a normal 25 to 30 degree below zero or 25 or 30 degree day, the kids get out of the car and they're wearing shorts and t-shirts. What? Wearing t-shirts and shorts. Are you bothering me? How was your trip down? Trip down where? I'm back. I made it. I'm here. Yeah, Timothy's just checking on me. Get your shit dressed. We got to go bail hay. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. T-shirts and shorts, sneakers with no socks. And they get out of their nice warm car, and then they go and get in the bus. Okay, so here, it's like, what the fuck is wrong with you people? The mother who is driving that kid to the end of the driveway so that they can get out of a nice warm car, burning fuel the whole time. I mean, these people must have money coming out of their assholes to get into a bus where there's only four kids anyway, because 90% of the people just drive their kids to school now. I think if I am if I run for mayor of this wonderful town, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to make it, uh, if, if you drive your kid to school more than twice a month, you have to pay to do it. Because the school buses don't run for nothing. And for every child that's on that, on that, in our township, there has to be a seat on a bus for them. There are You go in front of Kingwood School, and I'm going to make a video of it. Not today, because it's Saturday, but I'm going to make a video of the traffic jam that is in front of the schools. Kingwood and Death Valley. There's a traffic jam. Ask Kim, Timmy Cornpicker. He'll, he could go up and do a video on it. It is a traffic jam. And the school buses come in, and you'll see a 56 bus, you know, kid bus, 52 bus kid, kid bus with four or five kids in it. And then there's this traffic jam where all these people are dropping their kids off and they're not dressed for this weather at all. So what happens if mom leaves that driveway and dad's at work in New York City or Philadelphia or Easton or Trenton and mom goes to the grocery store and somebody BAM! Creams her ass. Don't even know who the hell she is. And she's in the hospital like, I don't remember. I don't know. You know? And her kid is trapped outside because nobody knew to call the school and say, Hey, um, your mother's been killed or hurt in a car accident. And this kid gets off the school bus annoyed because mommy didn't come pick him or her up. And or, or... Or uh, a friend drives them home from the high school, drops them off outside, and bolts out the driveway. And there's this kid in a shorts, a t-shirt, no socks on his feet, and, and Converse All-Stars. And he's sitting out there like this, outside the house, because guess what? He don't have a key to get in. Then what? He goes to the neighbor's house? Well, people around here don't even know their neighbors. Kid goes and knocks on the neighbor's door. Who the hell are you, and what do you want? That's the way this country has become, you know, very, very... Uh, uh, isolated from one another. I don't know who my neighbors are. I got a neighbor right over here, but I don't hardly ever talk to her. And uh, the people out front, I don't know. Um, uh, I think his name is Bob. Bob up front here. And he knows who I am, but he wouldn't know my kids. And, you know, I, they're just not around. We just don't go and so socialize because of Cam uh, telephones. My phone is in the bedroom. Telephones. People socialize on telephones. And of course, if they have their telephone, they can call somebody. See, I'm stuck outside. But still, zero degree weather? 20 minutes in zero degree weather, you're going into hypothermia. I'm sorry. By the time that kid turns around and comes back, you're pretty damn chilled. If he comes back. you know, Or if it even answers the damn phone. But whatever. It's just what I see. Yeah. So... This morning here in Illinois, but I got my John Deere freight delivered to my dealers. Yeah, there you go. You probably dumped a bunch of, of really good uh, winterized uh, fuel fuel conditioner in it. But anyway, I guess I'm done yakking along 18 minutes and you get the gist. Stop telling me that zero degrees is nothing. Yes, I know it can get colder. Yes, it has been colder here. Dress for the occasion, ladies and gentlemen. It isn't a big deal if you dress for the occasion. This is dressed for the occasion. You know, I grew a beard years ago when it wasn't fashionable to grow a beard. Okay? And then, of course, the goatees came in and I had that for, for shit. 15 years I wore that thing. Um, and it was out of style. And then I got told that I needed to change my, 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 my uh, style. And I was like, 
Here's one for you. Um, it's just me. It's what I what I do. So I wore a beard then because it was cold outside. And I worked outside all the time. Ninety winters in ninety four and ninety five. Those winters were brutal. Wind, sixty mile an hour wind. In I even have video on my channel of me climbing a pole to tighten electric lines while the wind is blowing these wires and they're sparking and arcing. Talk about crazy then. Of course, I threw the power and and uh, and did the job, but no big deal. And I videotaped that shit. It was crazy. So I understand that it gets really cold in other places, but it does get cold here too. And I do believe that people are overreacting here on the East Coast with the actual temperature that it is. This is nothing new. It used to happen all the time, and it still does. It's just talking points for the talking heads on your talking idiot box. That's all it is. So, anyways, thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.